What does it mean when we say that something has been ripped apart? Does it mean that something has been destroyed? Or does it mean that something has been opened up, exposing its long hidden contents for all to see? This could be the question for us today. Perhaps it would be helpful to consider first how the people of Jesus' day saw the sky, what its function was. Certainly, the people of biblical times could forecast the weather by looking at cloud patterns. They knew the danger of storms and heat. They knew the importance of rain for crop growth. But one thing that we might find harder to understand is they also saw it as a barrier to heaven. The heaven, not outer space. It was seen as a barrier which gave some protection and yes, separation from God. It made things safer. We might scoff at this notion, saying there is no place that God is not. Really? Is that how we always behave? So we hear that the sky is being ripped apart. Suddenly, it meant that there was no barrier protecting them from God. It also meant that God's activity would be clear for all to see, whether they chose to accept it or not. Things just got a whole lot more dangerous. Yet, if we consider briefly our passage from Genesis, we see that God created and ordered the world so life would flourish, including human life. We hear similar themes in our song. The voice of the Lord echoes throughout the song more than distant claps of thunder. This points to the revelation of God, the word of God, to the patriarchs, to Moses, the prophets, the kings, and the people. It was and is terrifying. Think of the people gathered at the foot of Mount Sinai when Moses received the law. The reaction of the prophets when they heard the word of God. This voice, this word is in authority of all. The primal waters of creation, the earthly storms, both fierce and gentle, the growing things, even the mighty cedars of Lebanon dance. We are called to give glory. God is not an abstract concept, but one who has appeared in the lives of his people from the instant of creation all the way to the distant future that we cannot even imagine. Still, some of us might be asking, what happened to Christmas? It seems that it just vanished. 
We saw the wise men visiting the child Jesus last week after following the star for oh so long. We get the very real sense that a curtain has been drawn over the growing up years of Jesus and it has except for that brief visit to the temple in Jerusalem found recounted in Matthew. But in today's reading, the curtain has been pulled back 30 years in the future. As again, we see John the baptizer baptizing in the River Jordan. And he's baptizing all of Judea and all of Jerusalem. But wait, wait. Who's that? Who's that coming from the northern region of Galilee, from a town called Nazareth, joining in with a penitent bronze of people? This might strike us as troubling. Surely Jesus was without sin. Why in the world would he need to repent and to be baptized for the forgiveness of sin? I agree. He never sinned, not even once. But as the confession said, as scripture says, he was fully human. And this included carrying our sinfulness to the cross. In this public act, he was taking on all that he came into the world to do. And while doing this, as he came out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn, literally in the Greek, ripped apart with a dove streaking down to land on him, accompanied by the voice from heaven declaring, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Wow, we heard the words confirming what Mark's Gospel told us at the beginning in verse 1, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. To the first hearers of the Gospel, they already knew what most of the people around Jesus didn't. Jesus was God's Son, and his coming into the world was good news. As one popular Christian song says today, it is the best news ever. God is with us, Emmanuel. But what does that have to do with us Christians of today? We already know that Jesus came into the world to save us. He is our Lord and Savior. Each of us has freely confessed this, and we do try to live in His will. Friends, wouldn't you agree that our world still has many issues and hurts, that people are still suffering, that people still need a Savior now more than ever. We can see it in the news headlines 
that our nation is divided more than in almost any other time in history. We continue to battle the COVID pandemic and sometimes it looks like this disease will never be overcome. Forgetting all the advances in medicine with God's help. Or we can look at the current economic climate and imagine, or maybe we're even experiencing the loss of jobs or hours. I know I've named only a few things, and there are countless others which impact our lives. Some people would advocate violence to take what they need. Others suffer in silence. Others talk a good talk, but their previous actions bring into question their sincerity. We and our world needs a Savior. The good news is that He came and comes to save everyone who calls on His name. New life is available because of Him. Because God so loved the world that he sent Jesus into the world to save us, to save the entire world. So how do we respond when it seems that our world is turned upside down and inside out? It always begins with prayer. Prayer containing lament as we express how we are hurting, how others are hurting. Confession as we examine our own lives and see what is wrong and ask for forgiveness and the strength not to make the same mistake again. Requests, asking for wisdom to make the correct choices which are pleasing to God. Life-giving choices, life-sustaining choices, asking to know God's will and then having the courage to act. Petitioning for things which seem to be beyond our abilities but which we believe are in God's will and listening. Listening for direction so we can indeed obey all that God is calling us to do. These things are not simple, and some would say they're not safe. Our culture doesn't want to be reminded that someone else is in charge. But just as the sky wasn't a barrier to the heavenly dove at Jesus' baptism, it's not a barrier today. We follow a risen Savior who has called each of us at our own baptism to follow him. Let us hear the heavenly call and follow our Lord. Amen and Amen.